There's been many, many tears. Every day is a struggle for us. The kids are all in counselling. It's been heartbreaking. It's been seven months since Safreen Duggan's life was turned upside down. That's how long her husband Daniel's been in custody, pending extradition to the United States on charges of conspiracy, arms trafficking and money laundering. He is in a cage-like setup. He does not have any um, access to the outside at all. There are no windows. His um, cell is approximately two by four metres long. His conditions are terrible. Daniel Duggan is a former US Marine and now Australian citizen. The United States is pursuing the 54-year-old over allegations he trained Chinese military pilots more than a decade ago. He 100% denies all accusations. He's still very confused as to how this could happen. We've taken a proud military man um, with a history of proud service, put him in green track suit and an uncertain future. Having retired from the Marines in 2002, in 2010, Duggan accepted an offer to instruct with the Test Flying Academy of South Africa, a company that provides pilot training. What was your husband's role at the South African Flying School? He was a subcontractor, uh, a pilot, and um, his role was to teach um, civil aviation. Okay. And, um, he's He's doing all right Australian Army place. veteran and family advocate Glenn Kolomitz says Duggan taught Chinese civilian pilots in South Africa periodically between 2010 and 2012. Let's look at the context at this time. China was booming. They were developing airports. They were drawing on a lot of Western expertise to develop their aviation industry. President Xi had, and, and I had a very uh, constructive conversation. Relations between China and the United States in that period were worlds away from where they are right now. In those early years of President Xi Jinping's tenure, there was optimism about his potential role as a reformer in China. I love this country. Thank Defense you. analyst Ben Herskovich says tensions between the two countries ratcheted up after Donald Trump's election in 2016. So in those years of 2017 to 2021, during the Trump presidency, US policy on China shifted in a really fundamental way and became much harder edged. Now, the US-China relationship is incredibly fractious. Both Beijing and Washington see the other as a rival, a competitor, and a threat ultimately to their long-term interests. In 2017, a grand jury secretly met to consider charges against Duggan. The US government alleges the trainees Duggan taught were not civil aviators, but Chinese military pilots. He was 100% told that he was training civilian pilots. Everything was open sourced. He was um, working with some very credentialed other pilots. He had no reason to think that um, he wasn't doing anything but what he was told. The US says Duggan made a number of trips to China in 2011 and 2012. Did he provide training to military pilots in China? No. This reeks of politics. It's um, interesting that um, Dan was working over there in that 2010, 2012 period. Suddenly in 20, 2017, the US changed their their emphasis on China. They, they start referring to China as the, um, the strategic threat. And all of a sudden, um, there's this indictment. Dan has been caught up in something that is political. Um, and he shouldn't be. The indictment alleges Duggan received more than $182,000 for providing a range of services, including teaching Chinese pilots how to take off and land on an aircraft carrier. 
China has massive ambitions when it comes to the growth of its naval power. And a key element of that is the creation of a very significant number of aircraft carriers. It makes sense that the United States would be deeply troubled by this kind of story in light of the fact that they could be going to war over the course of the next few years or the next few decades. Was he paid for teaching aircraft carrier takeoff and landing procedures to Chinese pilots? No. To your knowledge, has your husband ever divulged any military secrets to a foreign person? No. No. In a statement, the Test Flying Academy of South Africa says Duggan undertook one contract over a decade ago. It says none of its training involves classified methods, nor any frontline activities or defence services. There were seven individuals mentioned in the indictment. Dan was a US citizen at the time of, of the, the conduct as alleged, at the time he was working. He's the soft target here. The US State Department declined 730's request for an interview, but the indictment alleges Duggan knew he needed the government's permission to train a foreign air force. Nothing about this job said that Dan was working for, a, for the military of another country. It was a contract into a civilian um, a company. Duggan first came to live in Australia in the early 2000s. He met Safreen in 2011 and in 2012 became an Australian citizen. Why did your husband renounce his US citizenship? Um, he wanted to 100% commit to Australia and to me as his wife and to his kids. The pair lived together in China for eight years, where they ran businesses, married and grew their blended family. Thousands of Australians and expats were going to China. It was really the place to be. I um, started a fashion business, which Dan helped me with. He was working in um, with um, airports and um, in aviation. Uh, he was also running a bar, um, so we had lots of Lots of things going on. It's cold this so, morning, isn't it? Yeah. Frost is on the way. You pop that in your bag, Jacka. Safreen returned to Australia with their children at the start of the pandemic. Duggan rejoined the family last September. On the 21st of October, he took the kids to school, then planned to meet Safreen for coffee. He didn't show up. And um, I waited and probably 15 minutes after that is when Dan called me um, and he told me that he was at the police station. Um, I said, what for? He said, I've been arrested. I was in shock. He was in shock. Uh, it didn't feel real. It was only after Duggan's arrest that the indictment was made public and he learned of the charges against him. We're all very worried and concerned and feel like we're um, in a living hell at the moment. This is a highly unique and unusual case because of the features of the investigation. Duggan is fighting his extradition through Australia's courts. Glenn Collamitz claims a key reason the extradition should not proceed is because the so-called double criminality requirement has not been met. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. The conduct as alleged must constitute um, an offence, a crime, in both countries. So in the requesting country, the US, and in the requested country, Australia. And um, these offences, um, based on the, the alleged conduct, do not, const do not, to my view, constitute um, a, a crimes in Australia. Duggan's team has also raised a complaint with the Inspector General of Intelligence and Security as to whether ASIO acted appropriately in the lead up to his return to Australia last year and arrest. Dan had a, a job offer in Australia flying for a, a contractor to defence. That job um, required a security clearance and, uh, and required the, an aviation security identification card, an ASIC. And to get an ASIC, you need a, a clear uh, security clearance. So um, ASIO told him that his security clearance was, was successful.
the extradition most certainly should not go ahead whilst this Inspector General of Intelligence and Security inquiry is, is on foot. A spokesman for ASIO says the organisation operates within the letter and spirit of the law and is unable to comment further. The Attorney General's department says it can't comment on Duggan's case to avoid compromising ongoing investigations or matters in a foreign country. Duggan will remain in a New South Wales prison until at least late July, when the court next considers the case to stay his extradition. Here we go, so we're going to... That's all right, we're going to grab our posters. Safreen and her family recently travelled to the US Embassy in Canberra to call for the case against her husband to be dropped. Let the Australian law, Australian sovereignty, do its own justice. She fears he won't get a fair trial in the United States and could die in prison if he's found guilty. Thank you. Please yeah. pass that on to um, Caroline Kennedy and remind her of the words that we've just spoken. The reality is, with all of these trumped-up charges, he is facing 65 years imprisonment. Free Dan Duggan! Free Dan Duggan! I'd like to offer a plea to our Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, and Mark Dreyfus, our Attorney General, to let him go. I can't believe that it's been able to come this far.